Hello and welcome back to my channel. My name is Leora if you're new here and this is our D23 class president Andy. You've seen her before if you've seen the vlogs. So I'm going to do a Q&A about my undergrad experience and my master's program and Andy is going to help me and answer any questions regarding the Tufts MBS program. Okay so I'm going to say the questions that you all asked and Andy's going to answer first and then I will say what I think the answers are as well. So do you think being a biology major is more advantageous going into dental school? Um, so in my honest opinion, it doesn't really matter what you major in as long as you have all the prereqs down. I think what's more important is whatever you do, you should like it and then you should do well in it. Um, I've seen people with business majors who've done all the prereqs. Uh, I've seen history majors, it doesn't even matter what you do, you just need to really succeed. Yeah, I agree. I was a biology major, but I wasn't passionate about it and that kind of showed in my undergrad GPA. So looking back, I do wish I would have done something I was more passionate about because some of the biology classes were just over my head. <laughs> but I mean, it is what it is. If you're not passionate about biology, you can still kind of track through it, but I would say definitely choose something you're interested in and you can do prereqs. And I will say that most people do choose science majors. Mm -hmm. um, I think that's that's something that's heavily considered. So if you think you can do that and do well, you should, you should do that. I think this next question is more specific to me. Was an IV diploma important for undergrad? I don't know if I should get one. I personally found IV to be a little too intense. I wish I would have done AP classes or dual enrollment instead going through high school. Uh, what did you do, Andy? Yeah, I did take <laughs> AP classes. Um, I got a funny story. I don't know if I should share it, but um, <laughs> so I took AP calculus. Okay. Um, I got an A in the class, but I don't think I took the, the test that seriously. So I got a one on the exam. Uh, and just so you guys know, I could have submitted a blank exam with just my name on it and gotten that one. So. Yeah, if you're gonna take AP, definitely commit to it. Um, oh my gosh! It, it's gonna be worth. It's gonna be worth a lot of money down the road. So that's one mistake that I made that I I regret. So. Yeah, I actually didn't end up getting my IB diploma. I don't remember why. I think maybe because I didn't pass one of my my IB exams, but it didn't matter. I still got a full ride to my undergrad, and I'm in dental school now. I think I'm doing okay. How or where did you highlight your master's experience on your application? Uh, so for me, my master's program was a really big compelling reason in why I got into dental school. Um, my, what do I want to say? So during my undergrad, I actually did not do that well. I had a 3.0 science GPA and 3.2 cumulative GPA. Um, I had everything else, all the other stats and cur curriculars and um, community service and everything. I just needed that extra boost. Um, so I actually talked a lot about the master's program in my interview um, and I, I made sure to write about it in my personal statement. Yeah, I agree. I definitely highlighted my master's experience in my uh, personal statement. I think that is a great place to talk about it and it'll set you apart for sure if you can talk about how you've grown through that experience and maybe some challenges you've overcome. I think Tufts does a really good job of looking at the whole applicant. Um, they understand that as humans we do make mistakes and um, we can grow through these programs. So they actually like to have master's students and I think about half our class, mm -hmm. they all have masters. I can't remember if I talked about it in a different aspect of my application as well as my personal statement. I do have an in-depth application video. I'll link it below as well as do a little card here so you can see what it looks like. And if you're interested, I literally go through every section of the application and I kind of show you a little bit of mine as well as I go through it and give you some tips on what to put in your, your app. Okay, so this next question is, did you have someone or pay someone to look over your application before submitting it? Uh, so for me, the application process was already really expensive, but I had a lot of time, so I just I looked at it myself. Um, a lot of it's just busy work, making sure, sure that you're putting out all the numbers correctly. Um, as far as my personal statement, I really made sure to try to get like a diverse pool of people to look at it. Mm. <laughs> I try to get people that could view it differently. So, like that could give you different insights. Yeah. Okay. 
And I told them, like, criticize my paper as much as you can. Like, I want to make this the best piece of work that I submit. So. Yes, I would say I didn't pay anyone to look over my application. The only part that I had someone look at was my personal statement. And I kind of just gave it to my parents and my husband. And I said, please read this. You know me the best. And tell me where I can improve and critique it and make sure it sounds like me. You know, I wanted my personal statement to be genuine. You, you want to stand out, but you yes. also want to make sure that you have all the concrete facts in it too. Yeah, I would say the only thing I regret is maybe not having someone in the dental field have, like to look it over. Uh, I also want to encourage you to reach out to your admissions officers because I know that every school, they're all looking for different things. Um, they read these all the time, so they, they know what they, what they want to see too. Yes. That is something I wish I would have done. What was your undergrad and how many years did it take to get into dental school? Um, so I went to Western Washington University. My major was kinesiology and I had a minor in Spanish. Um, I, I had a great time, I loved it there and I don't regret a bit of it, um, even my failures. Um, I've come to learn that everyone is on their own timeline and at the time I was really struggling with the fact that I did not get in on my first cycle. And in fact, my friends around me were getting in and it was really disheartening. Um, but looking back, in retrospect, I really, I really loved the way everything went. Um, I took a, a gap year and during this time I, I worked, I traveled the world, um, I applied for that master's program. So it took me another two years for me to get into dental school. Um, but here I am, I made it. I feel like I learned so much along the way. Um, had an incredible time while doing it too. So how many cycles did you apply? So I got in on my second cycle. Okay. Um, the masters really set me on track. So if you are in a similar situation uh, to me, then I, I recommend that you do a one year masters program. It is expensive, but I think there's nothing that can beat that investment. Um, mm -hmm. It really puts you on the tracks for success if you can do well. So I went to Florida Gulf Coast University. It is a Florida State School. It's one of the newer ones and it's like only about 20 minutes from where I grew up. So I decided to live at home while I was an undergrad and I had a great time. Because it was a newer school, the facilities were amazing. You know, they were brand new and my school was very green and they had a lot of cool things that I could use, a lot of cool technology. Um, but because I was working at the time while I was going to school, my grades did suffer and so I knew I wouldn't get in if I applied straight from undergrad. <laughs> so I applied to a master's and um, I did a two year, two year master actually. So after that I applied and I got in on my first try. This next question is, what's a good GPA to aim for and vary for a Tufts acceptance? Um, it says also the lowest possible. This is a question you never want to ask admissions. <laughs> they hate, you know, what is the minimum? I, you know. Agreed. I understand why you're asking it though. Obviously you don't want to, you fail, so you want to know your minimum, but. Yeah, you're saying worst case scenario, yeah. what can I get and still get in? But I would say generally speaking, for a master's GPA, Tufts looks at minimum 3.5. I'm not saying that is a number that they put out there. This is just my opinion of what they look for. So d take it as you will. Um, but I think 3.5 should really be your minimum. Definitely try and score as high as you can in the master's program. They wanna see that you've improved significantly from undergrad. So that's what it comes down to. Mine was a lot lower than my master's, so I did show a major improvement. I wanna talk about the Tufts master's program really quick. Um, one of the biggest reasons why I chose that program was because there's actually a, it's kind of an unspoken, unwritten, guaranteed interview. Um, and they offer this to you if you can get a 3.4 or 3.5 GPA in the program. Um, and this actually changes every year depending on how the curriculum goes, but they do it, adapt it to uh, the student average and how the overall class is performing. Uh, in my opinion, this is, this is a beautiful deal because nothing beats a guarantee. Uh, I don't know very many programs out there that will guarantee you an interview based on performance, so. Yeah, where so, the yeah. master's is attached to the dental school. Yeah. yeah. Um, I've looked into other programs where there is no bearing on student success and like, they have no preference for how these students do. Um, so I just didn't want to waste the time, my time, for a program that wasn't going to favor you.
yeah, so basically 3.5 is kind of the GPA that at least Tufts looks for in master's program, like minimum. <laughs> so again, strive to be above the minimum. Next question is, was my master's hard? <laughs> so the whole reason I had to do a master's was because my study habits were not established from undergrad and you know, I did have some distractions, so I made sure not to work while I was pursuing my master's. So these aside, I could focus solely on school, and this was kind of my second chance slash, slash last chance to really get into dental school. So I buckled down, and it was definitely difficult at first. And once you kind of get the hang of things, it gets easier, but it was not easy and I'm glad I did it though because I needed that stepping stone to dental school because dental school is significantly harder. <laughs> so how was Tufts Masters? Uh, so the Tufts Masters, most of the people in this class are in the same boat as me. They all are in here for a year to try to get into a professional school. Everyone comes in really scared because obviously this is our second and last time to try to get into our dream school. Um, is the program hard? I would say I would say that it is hard, um, and it's hard because there is just so much content flying at you. Um, I don't think the material is hard. I think it's hard in the, in the fact that you have to manage your time well to be really efficient with your studying. And I think one of the biggest problems that students have is actually we study too much. Um, I think sometimes getting like bogged down in the little details, like you waste a lot of time on things that aren't really going to be relevant on your exam. So throughout this program, students really learn how to be efficient in their studying, and these are qualities that really carried over into dental school performance. Definitely. Learning how to do active learning versus just staring at a slide and not retaining any of right. that information. And just to add to that, um, I used to write down everything. I'm a big time writer, and I don't even write to like look at it later. I write as a memorization tool, mm -hmm. um, and I've come to realize that, you know, I can't keep doing this for literally every text on the slide. Um, you're gonna get, you know, like over a thousand slides over the course of this entire um, curriculum. So, yeah. you know, you're gonna burn <laughs> through a lot of paper. Um, and who has the time for that? So, um, everyone has their own way though. So, um, sometimes I do still write, but I just have to be conscious of the time that I put in and I wanna make it as active as I can. Okay, the next question is, what is the hardest class in your master's program? Oh. <laughs> There were so many. These are dental school and med school level classes. You know, the amount of material thrown at you in a short amount of time, it's, it mimics these professional programs. So I would say a lot of them, <laughs> I don't have a hardest one. Maybe clinical, not clinical anatomy, um, gross anatomy at Barry was very difficult, probably because it was the first really difficult class I took. It was in the first semester, so that would probably be my answer. Uh, for my program, I have two answers. Um, I would say the class that took the most time was clinical anatomy, just because there's so there's so much detail that you need to essentially memorize. Mm -hmm. um, but eventually you do get a, a hold of the pattern of the learning style and it gets faster. But um, the most difficult class content wise for the class overall, I would say was biochem. Uh, biochem for, for MBS was a little different than dental, but um, there were just like a lot of compounds that you needed to know, a lot of pathways, um, and I had to take a lot of time to like really draw everything out, and um, I thought the questions were super specific for that, so that was probably the most difficult. Yeah, that's true. I would agree to that, saying <laughs> we have similar responses. How competitive is it to get into a master's program? So how competitive is it to get into a master's program? Um, master's program is kind of like dental school in the fact that it is rolling admissions. So the, er the earlier you apply, the more likely you are to get in. Um, for these programs, they, they are tailored to students who do need a boost in GPA. So um, if you have a low GPA, I wouldn't let that discourage you. Um, I know at Tufts specifically, they have a high emphasis on your character. They want you to be altruistic, caring. Um, you should really have a lot of community service and you know, they want to make competent dentists and healthcare providers. Um, so they are looking at your character. Yeah, and then they do look at your DAT or MCAT as well too. Generally speaking, master's programs know that you're gonna have a lower GPA than if you're applying to dental school. So I think a lot of master's programs will say around 3.0 GPA, 
mine was lower. <laughs> and I think I had the benefit of applying early because I'm not sure if Barry does rolling admissions, but I feel like they do. I applied early, I had a lower GPA, I got it. Like I said, I knew that I wasn't gonna apply straight out of undergrad because there was no way I would get in. So I did a master's and I applied early. So it's very similar to applying to dental school. It's just not as intense. Like I had to write a personal statement as well. And I wanna elaborate on what she meant by applying early. Um, for me, I applied in February for fall admissions. Okay. Um, and that was on the earlier end. I was one of the first people accepted. Um, they do accept as you as you apply. Um, I do know people that got in the day before. Uh, yeah. So it really depends, but they do accept all the way through the, the fall and sometimes a little into the summer. That's true. They definitely have a cap. So it's going to vary per year how many people are applying for the master's programs. But I think I submitted my application in February or March and that was considered early. When it opened up, I was pretty much around that opening date. So thank you for all of your questions. If you have any more, definitely submit them below and I will answer them in the comments. Thank you, Andy, for helping me answer these. And we'll see you in the next one. Bye.